There you go. There it goes. There we go. The September 8th, 2022 Planning Commission meeting for the city of Newburgh, Oregon is now called to order. Faye, may I have a roll call, please? Charles Avan. Here. Chris Wright. Here. Jeff Mussoff. Here. Jason Dale. Here. Linda Newton Curtis. Here. Oh, uh, uh, Hunter Hansen is absent and Sharon Kepri is uh, excused. Okay. All right, wonderful. Thank you very much, Faye. At this time, I would like to open the public record for any comments not on tonight's agenda. Faye, is there anybody waiting at all? I do not, there is, but is not, do not, in the and so say, I assume it's that no, there are no comments. We did have okay. a question in the QA that came up. If that person wants to uh, have their comment spoken out loud, or I can read it, you can raise your hand and we can have you um, ask your question, or else I can just read it as well. And state the person's name, please. Okay. Looks like they have their hand raised. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you for uh, having me this uh, opportunity. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, how does the planning um, commission typically improve the Newburgh community, and what are its main um, goals and values? Thank you. Uh huh. Well, the um, planning commission. Uh, can we? Can we now? also? Sorry, you also need to state your name for the record, and then we can answer. Thank you. All right. Sorry, my name is uh, Troy Pigman. Yeah, thank you. Can you spell your name, Troy? Uh, T R O Y, uh, and the last name is P I G M A N. All right, Mr. Pigman, um, or Troy. Um, I'm Chris Wright, I'm the chair for the Planning Commission. And answer your question, uh, this is a public body uh, appointed by citizens here in Newburgh that are responsible for considering land use matters. This commission comprises of seven citizens and we all have different backgrounds to have a variety and there is a charter um, denoting that there cannot be more than two from the same field, like two scientists, two um, uh, other jobs. Um, we have to have a variety here in the city according to our city charter. And then uh, we also look at anything that comes onto the agenda and that includes legislative quasi-judicial public hearings, as well as other workshops and land use planning commission issues that come to our attention. There are certain things by law that we uh, hear public testimony and then comment on. Um, do any of the other commissioners have any uh, comments about what the planning commission does and how we contribute to the city of Newburgh? Any staff comments? I can I can try and add. I, I'm playing Doug here, so <laughs> Doug's the community <laughs> development director, but he's out this week. Um, in terms of, uh, I guess going off of what Chris mentioned, so it's a lot of times every city uh, in the state of Oregon has a planning commission um, that comprises of uh, community members of the city, um, and like Chris said. The main goal is to review land use proposals that come in that require public hearings. Um, and so either they'll make a final decision on a land use uh, application or they'll, if it needs to go further to city council, they'll make a recommendation to city council. 
Um, but in terms of following the, the goals set in place for the city, um, they adhere to all of the development code and all of the comprehensive plan policies that have been uh, written for many, many years. Um, so they adhere to the approval criteria for uh, applications, meaning that if a proposal comes forth, their job is to uh, make sure that it meets the approval criteria that is in the development code for the city. Um, so they make the decisions based off of that, as well as making sure that proposals follow um, comprehensive plan policies that are adhere to whatever the proposal is. Um, I don't know, anyone else have anything to add to that? Yeah, yeah, um, Commissioner Musall, I'd add, uh, we're kind of like a conduit and a platform, kind of a go between between city planners and the public that, that also provides a platform for them to the public to either air grievances or speak in support. And so it gives more of a voice to the citizenry as so far as um, land use things go. It's a wonderful addition there. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Pigman, is there any other questions that you have at this time? Uh, not right now, but thank you for the great answers. Well, you are very welcome. Thank you for asking that. Um, at this time, I will close public testimony uh, for comments not on tonight's agenda. And we will be moving on to the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve Planning Commission meeting minutes for August 11th, 2020? Right, Commissioner Musal, I'll go ahead and move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting as they are. Thank you, Commissioner Musal. Do I have a second? I'll second. We have a first and a second. May we have a voice vote, please? For all in favor? Aye. 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 Are any of the councilors opposed to the minute? The Planning Commission minutes as stated. And the Planning Commission meeting minutes are approved five to zero. Okay, up next, we have our quasi judicial public hearing. Um, and now I call to order. CUP 22-0010 to use the single family dwelling as a vacation rental at 3951 North Boomer Drive, Newburgh, Oregon. Our applicants are Chris Kish and Kelly Kish. This will be an R1 zoning and planning district LDR low density residential. At this time, the purpose for the planning commissioners is to review the application, hear, discuss, and deliberate public testimony, make a motion on the matter and vote. And the testifying procedure will be owner applicant or primary opponent gets 15 minutes. And then we have first proponents, anybody in favor uh, has another five minutes and second undecided or opponents also receive five minutes. After each speaker, planning commissioners may have questions or clarification. And then at the end, we'll have a chance for rebuttal. At this time, I would like to call for any abstentions, bias, ex parte contact and objections to jurisdiction. Hearing none, may I have the legal announcement from Luba Red? All right. ORS 197.7. 97 requires certain statements be made at the commencement of a public hearing. The applicable city and state zoning criteria must be listed. This means that we must advise you of the standards that must be satisfied by the applicant prior to our approval or denial of an application. The planning staff will list the applicable criteria during his or her presentation of the staff report. 
Persons wishing to participate in this hearing must direct their testimony or the evidence toward the criteria stated by the planner or other specific city or state criteria which you believe apply. You must tell us why the testimony or evidence relates to the criteria. Any issue with which might be raised in an appeal of this case to the Land Use Board of Appeals, LUBA, must be raised in person or by letter at the local level prior to the city approving or denying the application. The law states that the issue must be raised in enough detail to afford the decision maker and the parties an opportunity to respond. This part of the law is known as the raise it or waive it requirement. If you do not bring it up now, you can't bring it up at LUBA. Failure of the applicant to raise constitutional or other issues related to proposed conditions of approval in enough detail to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue preclude an action for damages in circuit court. Prior to the conclusion of the initial evidentiary hearing on an application, any participant may request an opportunity to present additional evidence or testimony regarding the application. The Planning Commission will grant such a request through a continuance or extension of the record. Wonderful, Mary. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll be having a staff report and commissioners may ask for brief questions for clarification. And you're on, Mary. <laughs> it's Sam. Sam gets to do it today. <laughs> oh, Sam. You're on, Sam. Great. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Sam Goodmanstead, one of the assistant planners with the City of Newburgh. So the case before you this evening is a vacation rental request at 3951 North Boomer Drive. And I'll begin by entering the entire staff report into the record. All right. Uh, next slide, please. So background, Chris and Kelly Kish have submitted an application to the city of Newburgh for conditional use approval for a vacation rental in a four bedroom single family home. Again, its location is 3951 North Boomer Drive. And we have identified the map and tax lot number for this parcel. It is in the R1 zone, which is the low density residential zone. The applicable criteria for this case is 522060, which is the conditional use criteria through a type three process and 15445300 through 350, which is our vacation rental home standards. Next slide, please. This is a map identifying the location of the property. It's located on North Boomer Drive and it is the area bordered by red. Next slide, please. This is a site view of the home. Next slide, please. The criteria, 15225060. The first is dealing with location, size, design, and operating characteristics. It is located in an area with existing single family homes. It's north of downtown and near the Darnell Wright Sport Complex. The use is similar to a vacation, or I'm sorry, the use is similar to a residential use in its design and operating characteristics. There are two off street parking spaces, and those parking spaces take their access from North Boomer Drive. Next slide, please. Subsection B is dealing with location, design, and site planning, and then C is whether it will be consistent with the code. So quick summary, which is further detailed in your staff report. The location is attractive for a vacation rental given its proximity to downtown and regional attractions such as wineries and George Fox University. As I noted before, there are two off-street parking spaces with their access off of North Boomer Drive, and it is compatible with other residential uses in the area, which are both owned and rented. Next slide, please. These are the vacation rental standards themselves. It has to be in a single family dwelling, which 3951 North Boomer Drive is. They would need to register with the city for transient lodging tax, which means for the rental of the units, there is a 9% tax for its use as a vacation rental, and that's paid based on what gets charged on a nightly basis. We have to have two off street parking spaces, and there are two, as I previously mentioned. It's a four bedroom home, so the maximum occupancy for the vacation rental is eight. They cannot have or include as part of the vacation rental the use of RVs, tents, or any temporary shelters. There is a requirement that the applicant will post near the front door the contact information for the police department, what the vacation rental standards are, what the maximum occupancy is, what day the garbage pickup will occur, which is on Wednesday. Next slide, please. 
Staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission adopt Order 22-012 with conditions. And that will conclude staff's presentation. Thank you. At this time, are there any questions from the commissioners for staff? Yeah, Commissioner um, Bond. Um, sorry. <laughs> on okay. the staff report, I saw that there were some comments on the uh, from the water treatment superintendent regarding the backflow assembly um, not being compliance with testing, but the last test recurred was in uh, February 9th, 2019. Is um is there any uh future endeavors looking to get that tested or is there anything um, regarding that specific area? Yeah, correct, right. Uh, staff is aware that the most recent backflow test was conducted in 2019 um, and definitely looking to uh, have that completed, um, you know, coinciding with approval of the, of the permit. Sam, are the applicants here this evening? Uh, I'm not sure if they are. Um, I, I actually, I, I think I see their names right now, yeah. Okay, because I do have a question for them. Uh, does anybody else have any questions from staff? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and hear the public testimony of our applicants who have a 15 minute limit and then we'll have any commission, any questions from commissioners following. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having us. Um, so we are applying to have our home at 3951 North Boomer Drive in Newburgh um, approved as a short-term rental. Um, our hope is basically to bring people to Newburgh, support the local economy, local businesses, um, you know, just kind of support hospitality in the region. Um, I believe that we have met all of the codes that are required for there. Um, in regards to the backflow testing, we were unaware that it was done, but we do um, have a company that we are in contact with called Br Bruton B Backflow. Um, and we are um, currently waiting to hear back from them as far as scheduling to get that done. Um, we have, I guess I'm not 100% sure what to say, but it's a four, four bedroom home, maximum sleeping of eight people. Um, We've been in contact with all of our neighbors because we really wanna be respectful of the area and um, everyone has our phone number in the immediate surrounding. Um, they know to contact us if there's ever any issues because we definitely do not want that. We want to be a respectful um, business owner in that neighborhood, and we want to be super respectful to every everyone's um, privacy and quiet hours. And um, we definitely hold um, our people that come to stay there at the highest standards for that. Um, we've we use a. Um... It, it, the company is called Evolve. Um, use them for bookings, screenings, all that. They do a really good job of conducting a small background check um, prior to any uh, tenant, or excuse me, resident, or um, what's it called, um, guest coming to our property. So we we definitely want to make sure that that it's the that they have on their end they have good reviews. So they're they're known to be good guests with the previous Airbnb, Verbo, whatever they've stayed at. So we know for sure that they're gonna be respectful when they come to our, our home in, in Newburgh. Um, and of course, um, we have a very um, strict rules and regulations for our uh, residents as well that gets um, emailed to the guests prior to them coming to the property. Um, we also have a welcome packet that is very, very detailed that we've put together that has everything, including um, fire and police and um, just all of our rules and regulations, um, our contact numbers um, in case something does come up. And, and again, the most important thing to us is that we are extremely respectful to our neighbors and every single one of them surrounding us has a way to get a hold of us 24 hours a day, seven days a week in case anything does come up. 
Um, also, in addition to that, Chris does own a property management company himself. Um, he usually manages long-term rentals. However, thankfully, because of that, we have access to any sort of service provider or emergency contact that we might need to go out and handle any sort of situation that could come up at the property while people are there. Wonderful. Thank you. Are there any other? I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just saying, of course. <laughs> Oh, okay. Are there any uh, questions from commissioners to our applicants, Chris or Kelly Kish, at this time? Uh, Commissioner Musal, just one quick question. Um, more out of curiosity, uh, you spoke about a lot of the um, the things that, like in the present tense. Um, so, do you presently own vacation rentals, or so? We had started this home as a vacation rental approximately a year ago. We had looked online. We had called the city. We thought that we had everything done that we were supposed to do. Um, it actually took my parents starting a vacation rental and actually going into the city to find out that this hearing is required. Um, so of course, as soon as we heard that, we tried to jump on it as fast as we could. Um, we had a COVID delay, you know, we got COVID and that kind of delayed everything. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we, we jumped on it and got, I mean, we've submitted taxes already and, um, we had gotten a call from the city about what it was for. And we're like, Oh, it's, it's <laughs> for a vacation rental, you know, let us know if you have any questions. And we never heard back. We've been trying to do everything right. Um, <laughs> oh, that, so absolutely. That's of... fine. I was just curious because it sounded like yeah. you were speaking in the present tense there. Yeah, <laughs> no, we've, we've been, we've had it for about a year and, okay. um, literally just found out about this. <laughs> and, <laughs> the process. And we thought we had done it the right way. We had yeah. called and submitted some stuff with the city and it was it was explained to us that there was some COVID a lot of turnover, turnover and, COVID and some all, confusion all and and we were totally fine with that and we just we just made it very clear that we just want to make sure that we're 100 percent compliant with any policies and rules because that's just yes. how we are and we we think that's the right thing to do and it's we just want to be very respectful to you know the current rules there at Inverd. Well, welcome aboard. We'll get you squared away. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hi, Chris and hi, Chris and Kelly. This is Commissioner Newton Curtis. Um, hi. I know. I, th I think it can be a pretty tricky process, right? Going through all these different rules and everything. But I, I was also curious, just like Jeff. I mean, do you have other vacation properties in and around Newburgh, and do you live in Newburgh or, or close to Newburgh? Again, I'm just curious. Um, we do not have any other vacation rentals in any other city. Um, my husband does manage long-term rentals within Newburgh, um, though those are owned by other um, other people. Yeah. Um, we did we did move out of the home about a year ago. We live basically between Sherwood and Newburgh. It's about a 12-minute drive um, off of Bramblewood. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just curious. That no, no reason except my own curiosity there. So, sure, sure. I, like I said, I think it can be a tricky process going through all the different rules. So, yeah, it was. I'm glad um, you got through them eventually. Thank you. the The hardest part was um, the trying to figure it out all online. Yeah, it, no, so. I hear that. <laughs> yes. This is Commissioner Wright. I have actually a question for Mary or Sam. Does the backflow assembly have anything to do with uh, conditions of approval? It does not, no. Okay, that was one question. All right, now I have a question or yeah, for the applicants, Chris and Kelly Kish. Yes. And we fit on the back, back flow assembly issue, also brought up by Councillor Abon. Um, and you are going to seek a uh, consult with Brutan Black Backflow. Um, and you did address how, how long you've been there officially because yes, one of your neighbor or uh, submissions did comment about 
it being used. So I was kind of curious about that too. Sure. And then if you are the manager uh, and you will be able to handle the complaints, uh, the other thing is, is what is the age limit to rent to from Evolve Bookings? I believe they have it set at 25, but we can, we can check that real fast if you don't mind a second. No, go ahead. It is 25, yes. Well, that's, uh, that's older. All right, and have you ever had any uh, complaints to in this last year to the police department of anything, any complaints? Not to the police department, no. Not that we are aware of, at least. But just directly and you were able to ha comply or handle it? We had one complaint, actually, uh, right, <laughs> right as soon as our land use notice sign went up in the yard, um, but we handled it immediately. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Of course. Are there any other comments or concerns from commissioners? Questions? Then at this time, I will close public testimony. Oh, excuse me. Faye, are there any opponents or undecided awaiting test public testimony in our foyer or virtual foyer? <laughs> I see it on. Wonderful. Hearing none, then at this time, I will close public testimony portion of this hearing for CUP 2022-0010. Are there any, may I have final comments from staff and my recommendation, please? No final, no final comments from staff. Okay. And at this time, planning commission will deliberate. So commissioners, um, I see I've answered all my questions and find uh, this application to be satisfactory. Any other comments, concerns, question on the application? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve CUP 22-0010? Uh, Commissioner Musall, I'll go ahead and move that we approve conditional use permit 2022-0010 for vacation rental. Thank you, Commissioner Musall. May I have a second? I'll second the motion. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Oh, excuse me, I have to scratch. <laughs> May we have a vote, a roll call vote, please, Faye? All right. Uh, Charles, 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 yes. Chris Wright. Uh, yes. Jeff Moose. Yes. Jason Dale. Yes. Linda Newton. Yes. All right. Planning Commissioner Order 2022-012 approves conditional use permit CUP 22-001 for a vacation rental home at 3951 North Boomer Drive here in Newburgh is approved. Congratulations. And thank you for your due diligence, uh, Chris and Kelly Kish for complying with everything and doing your due diligence. It's very much appreciated. Thank you all so much. We, we very much appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. At this time, we'll hear items from staff for anticipated schedule of planning commission activities for October through the year. I guess that's probably me. <laughs> yep. Since Doug's not here. Um, I, let me see. I can do it if you'd like me to. Yeah. 
I don't have it in front of me. Um, All right. Yeah. Uh, today was the vacation rental on 3951 Boomer Drive. The quasi-judicial hearing will have one on October 13th. October 1, 13th. We'll have another vacation rental at 500 North Guardfield Street. That is also a quasi-judicial hearing. And then we have a HNA and a EOA public and semi-public comprehensive plan amendment and comprehensive plan amendment legislative hearing. Then a briefing on our urban reserve expansion. Hmm. And November 10th, 2022, Senate Bill 458, Middle Housing Land Division, with a legislative hearing tentative. And then also on November 10th, a briefing housing production strategy. I'm sure Mary will be on that one. You do a great job, by the way. I love all that stuff. A briefing also for the urban reserve expansion. And... Um, <laughs> I wanted to wonder if Musal had a fun time at his hearing this week. Um, okay, I won't comment about that. All right, December 8th, 2022, Development Code Amendment. Substantial completion for a legislative hearing, also tentative. And then the Water Master Plan, Amended Water Treatment Plan, legislative hearing, and that's also tentative. And then January 12th, election for the chair and vice chair, and then any other things for that day to be announced. January 16th, the uh, planning commission and city council have a joint work session for a multifamily code audit. And then February 9th, 2023, multifamily code audit, legislative hearing, West End, and also a West End Mill District Conference of Plan Text Amendment a comprehensive map amendment and zoning and a quasi-judicial hearing that's also tentative on that. And then the development code amendment for the institutional zone and overlay regulations, also a legislative hearing tentative. So I'm gonna stop right there in February. There are a couple more entries, but we won't go into it. So are, at this time, are there any other items from commissioners? Mm -hmm. I would ask uh, really quick. I wanted to comment that our next start start night our meeting on on September or in September, September it will be in person at the uh, public safety building at seven. Okay, what day? No, no, to talk to me. <laughs> so that, now that, it's October thirteenth. October thirteenth. Like you're reverberating. <laughs> um, October 13th. I'm getting Max Headroom flashbacks. <laughs> oh, that's something, I, Commissioner Dale. I wanted to talk to you or comment to you about your idea of multiple properties. I thought about that, and one of my friends actually does own a Airbnb. And she has multiple properties. And one of the things they that she does, if you rent one, it allows you like, uh, say in the case of uh, development here in Newburgh and somebody has multiple properties and you can uh, put some kind of uh, accommodation on each property. And then whoever rents any of those properties has the right to go to any one of those properties to do the amenity there. Like just saying like a tennis court at one location or a, you know, um, meeting house at a different location. And that could be a possibility. Um, so yeah, there, there might, I know people who own multiple properties in different cities, so that might actually work at some point, even if they're far away or close, if they uh, have something to offer at each location, it might be like a little resort town for everybody to go to within that system. So. Hmm. Well, the, a, the idea was to reduce uh, planning costs by distributing the cost of planning over multiple uh 
multiple properties or um, or areas, I guess. But uh, you know, the planning department says that uh, that's probably not a feasible thing. I think maybe if you could do some some sort of modular setup, like uh, I'm not necessarily thinking with. Granted, we're talking about housing, but if you uh, if you had similar size properties and, and you know did it like a cookie cutter type of thing, maybe. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just don't know. I don't know. I think it's possible if somebody had multiple properties and they had different amenities on them, and it might be a uh, worth being on those kind of properties if you have access to different kinds of amenities within that system that was actually a great idea yeah and how if it's feasible is another item on the agenda um but anyway i just wanted to tell you that it actually was a really good idea there's some thought there for properties that may have disbursement within the same area well, I'm reminded okay. about blind squirrels and nuts and dogs and things like that. So. <laughs> hmm. Now there's the concept of blind squirrel. That would be interesting. Anyway, um, are there any other items from commissioners? Not really an item per se, but I know <laughs> I think Connor, Connor's asked a question last time about um, whether there was any information on the number of vacation homes there are in Newburgh at the moment. And I think Doug mentioned there was something on the website that gave some information around that. And I went to the website and couldn't find anything. And I'm wondering if Mary, if, if you have any kind of idea about that, I guess the only reason I'm asking is because I think on the one hand, vacation homes bring a lot of additional um, income into the city, which is a great thing. And some really, um, I don't know, it, it just brings a lot of additional uh, people in um, to spend their money, you know, go to the Allison Hotel and, you know, support the local businesses and so forth. But it also seems kind of counterintuitive in a way that on the one hand, we're talking about, um, not enough homes in the city for people and yet vacation homes and it seems every time I've been in on the planning commission commi sorry commission meeting we've approved another vacation home and I mean obviously I don't want to not approve a vacation home when it's meeting all the requirements that um need to be considered but on the other hand I don't know I just I guess I'm just confused about what the long-term plans are and, and again if there is any information anywhere out there that we could see um let me share my screen let me see if i can do that and linda we, we did get a couple of things uh from this from the city it may have been prior to oh well, yeah. yeah the uh or just write on that meeting about the city of Dundee and some uh, criteria that they just put forth. Oh, I didn't see that, yeah. Hey, Faye, um, can you um, allow me to share my screen? You have to adjust permissions or something. Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, what I was gonna show you is where on the website some of this information is. Um, and I think Commissioner Wright is correct in that I, we may have, when I made this stuff, sent it before you were on planning commission. Um, <clears throat> so we did figure out kind of how many have been approved over time. Hmm. And then we made a little heat map to oh. kind of show where the concentrations are um and there are about what we think are a little over 40 at the moment um of course those are the ones that have gone through the process um, <laughs> yeah, and i can course. tell you just from very basic research there are a lot that have not gone through the process that are in the city oh, yeah. um so the number in my opinion is not totally accurate but 
the heat map is interesting so that it'll at least give you an idea of you know where most of these are located let me see Do and it. if you look at the uh if you actually look up airbnb or invoke or any of these uh, others they'll have actually the amount of listings in each city yeah. so i was kind of surprised that there were a lot of people that had rentals here that have not gone through the city oh yeah. wow yeah and that is something mary is the city going to be having any crackdown criteria about the people who are not well we haven't had a code enforcement officer for the last few months i know they're currently hiring one and i've asked if that would be part of their job description and i don't know that yet um but it would be, it would, in previous cities I've worked for, the code enforcement officer has been the one to handle those sort of situations. Um, <clears throat> so I would assume that, that we may have that ability in the next month or two when we have somebody on board, but um, right now we're not currently um, addressing those that have not gone through the permit process. Okay. Yeah, Lin Linda, when we did one, I think at the beginning of last year or a couple years ago, mm -hmm. uh, one of the sites showed over 200 listings here in Newburgh. Wow. So, yeah. But whether uh, that is reflective of a correct and current accurate database may be another story. Yeah, because it will take somebody to go through their contact people, and yeah, that definitely yeah. needs a code enforcement. Yeah, so I'm I'm here on the planning webpage. So if you just go to the homepage, Newburgh, Oregon, Doc of Government Planning, that's where mm -hmm. we are right now. Yeah. Then under FAQs here on the side, uh -huh. there's a whole thing that says, "Do I need a permit for my short term or vacation rental?" And then we have all, all this fun information for people. And then at the bottom, there's this density slash heat map. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and you can see, and it, you know, it makes natural sense that a lot of them are concentrated, created more towards um, downtown because there's restaurants, it's more walkable, it's easier to get to things. Um, but we, you know, we are seeing it kind of all over, but with definitely more majority are around the downtown area and by the university. Yeah. Well, How often is this uh, map going to be updated? That's a great question, because it's definitely not accurate. I know that there's more now than 33, um, but we'll probably plan to update it at least a couple of times a year. Um, this one was last updated in March, so it's probably due to be updated. I know. That's an easy enough thing for, for me to have our GIS team do for us. Yeah. I know it's probably a, would be a lot of work to do, but it might be interesting to look at the proportion of vacation housing within certain regions based on the proportion of homes within those regions. And again, I'm not asking that anybody do that. It just kind of struck me that it might be an interesting metric to look at. Mm -hmm. You mean in terms of like density and then the a number of vacation rentals? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if there were like 100 homes in the area and now right. those 100 homes, yeah, maybe five were vacation homes, just looking at the proportions there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm kind of curious, Maria, are, are people that have uh, three and four bedroom houses or more having problems renting them oh you mean like long-term rentals yeah i don't know i and actually don't know that uh, now reverting to trying to do this to um you know breach that yeah i don't have I the data really, on that yeah i really don't know very many families anymore that have four kids it seems like but or you know more besides me and my brood my village <laughs> <laughs> but actually the last one graduated so happy 
Anyway, okay. That was all my questions. Or do any of the other planning commissioners have any questions, comments? Hearing none, the planning commission meeting for September 8th, 2022 is now adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.